What's up everyone? Today we're going to go over leak code 413, arithmetic slices. First we'll go over the input and the output, then we'll look at the approach and diagrams, and finally we'll go over the code and complexity. Put is going to be an integer array, and the output needs to be an integer. We have to return the total number of arithmetic slices. In other words, what are the arithmetic sequences we have? And they don't have to be the same difference, but we want the total number in the input array. Let's say our input was 1, 2, 3, 5, 7. Our output is going to be 2 because we have 1, 2, and 3 as a sequence, and the difference between them is 1. And we also have 3, 5, 7. The difference between them is 2. So these are two separate arithmetic slices. Now, a valid arithmetic slice has to be at least three numbers in a sequence. It could be more. So if there was a nine at the end, we could have that and we would just go three, five, seven, nine. But we have to count all of them. So if there was a nine here, then three, five, seven would be one, five, seven, nine would be another, three, five, seven, nine would be one more. Don't worry about that. We'll look at it in a couple of the diagrams and a few examples. When dealing with dynamic programming, what we do is first assume that a solution to this problem does exist. In our case, what we're going to do is take the original thing and trust that a solution to this does exist and that we can figure it out using something to do with the subproblems. So how do we make this smaller and re-ask the same question in a way that makes sense and we can apply some logic to it? Well, when we ask what's the maximum arithmetic slices we have, we're going to get an answer. And first, we're going to break it down by reducing the array by one number. So we have the original thing. The number of arithmetic slices of this is going to be the number of arithmetic slices for this plus 1 if 7 minus 5 is the same as 5 minus 3. The difference in that case is 2. So we have plus 1 for that. But hold on, let's see what else happens. The arithmetic slices for this is going to be the number of arithmetic slices for this plus 1 if 5 minus 3 is equal to 3 minus 2. It's not. So that's where we reset the chain and we return a value of 0. The number of arithmetic slices for this is going to be the number of arithmetic slices for this plus 1 if 3 minus 2 is equal to 2 minus 1. And in this case it is. So this is our base case, so we just return 0. And then we're going to add 1 because this is valid. Then when we get up to here, we see that 5 minus 3 is not 3 minus 2. So we reset it, and then we return 0 to here. And then what we're going to do is plus 1 if 7 minus 5 is 5 minus 3, and it is. In total, we have two check marks, so the answer for this is going to be 2. Next, we'll look at a few different examples and see how the sums actually accumulate. And you'll see what it means if we have a 0 or an x where it doesn't match up, but what happens if we have consecutive check marks? So if you have a green, 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 the numbers are going to get incremented and we're going to have a global variable which keeps track of the cumulative sum of the returned values. Here are a few more cases. Let's say our input array was 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. So that array is going to recursively ask one shorter array. That's going to ask something shorter, and that's going to ask the base case. The base case, of course, always returns 0. And then this stack is going to see if 5 minus 3 is the same as 3 minus 1. It is, so it's going to add 1 to whatever the base case returned it. So we go here. Now that stack is going to see if 7 minus 5 is the same as 5 minus 3. And because the differences are the same, it's going to add 1 to whatever the child stack returned and return that. So this is going to return 2. Now the original array, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, is going to see if 9 minus 7 is equal to 7 minus 5. And it is, so it's going to add 1 to the 2 and return the 3. In total, we have 6. 1 plus 2 plus 3 for output of 6. So why do we do it like that? That's because we have a cumulative number that's adding up. 1 through 5 is valid. 1, 3, 
uh, one three five seven is also valid and then we have one three five seven that's also valid so if we have non-zero returns then we know that okay we are going to add these up cumulatively and we're gonna add one to whatever was returned to us so one two and three when we go here we see that one three five then three five seven then five seven nine we also have one three five seven we also have one uh, three five seven nine and finally we have the whole thing one three five seven nine these are all valid arithmetic slices so for this we're gonna have an output of six well one three five eight and ten we ask the array and the array is gonna ask its child one three five eight it goes here then the base case says zero this stack is gonna see is three minus five the same as three minus one it is so it's going to add one and return that now this stack is going to see is 5 minus 8 the, the same as 5 minus 3 it's not so it's going to ignore what was there and it's just going to simply return 0 then this one is going to do 1 3 5 8 10 and it's going to see okay is 10 minus 8 the same as 5 minus 8 minus 5 it's not so it's going to ignore whatever was passed up it's going to return 0 our job is to collect all of these values that are being passed up so 1 is going to be the output of here because we have 1 3 and 5 here's our last example <clears throat> 1 2 3 4 goes for 1 2 3 goes for 1 2 this returns 0 because it's a base case then 3 minus 2 is the same as 2 minus 1 so it's going to add 1 to what the base case gave it and return that this is going to return 1 up here and this is going to see, okay, is 4 minus 3 the same as 3 minus 2? It is. So it's going to add 1 to whatever the child returned, and it's going to pass up 2. Our job is to add up all these cumulatively, so the output here is going to be 3. That's because we have 1, 2, and 3. We also have 2, 3, and 4. And we also have 1, 2, 3, 4 as another arithmetic slice. So the main point to take away here is that we're taking the things cumulatively, the numbers that we have cumulatively, the numbers that get bubbled up increment by one if it's a valid chain of an arithmetic sequence or as this problem calls it an arithmetic slice here's the top down and the bottom up approach for the recursive version first we initialize a global variable sum and then we pass into our recursive function the array and the pointer pointing to the end if that pointer i ever gets less than two then we know we've hit a base case and return zero Otherwise, we initialize our temp variable. First, we do an if conditional check to see if ai minus a minus 1 is the same as ai minus 1 and ai minus 2. If it is, we add 1 to the recursive call to make it one shorter, and we accumulate it to the sum that we're going to ultimately return. Otherwise, we don't just stop, we still recursively ask, and we just ignore at that stage what we need. But finally, we return res for that ret recursive stack. For the dp code, we initialize a dp int and a sum int, which is like a global variable, and we just iterate through the array. If we have our if conditional, we do plus plus on the dp, accumulate it in the sum variable, otherwise we reset the dp to zero. Finally, we just return sum. Time and space complexity, for the dp approach, we have O of 1 for space, and O of n for time. We don't really use any additional space and we're going through the entire array once. Now, for the recursive, we're gonna have O of one for space. I'm not counting the recursive stack as extra space. And for the time, it's actually going to be O of one. That's because we have an if or else logic. We're not going to be branching in two different ways. So it's not going to be two power n or anything like that. So the reason it's O of n is because we are going to recursively ask one single number reduced at a time. So 1357 becomes 135, so on and so forth. And if you recall the chain, we're only going down one number or one number removal at a time. So that's how you solve LeetCode 413, arithmetic slices. If you like the video, please thumbs up. And if you wanna see more, don't forget to subscribe.